Well, can I just put it into perspective that the support for Israel in Parliament remains very large and very strong. So I don't want your viewers to get the mm -hmm. wrong impression. Um, but I represent the largest Jewish community of any member of Parliament, um, of, of all, you know, the, the whole range of the, the Jewish community. And what I've found is that um, because I've been robust in terms of speaking up for Israel's uh, position, but also to ensure that my constituents' voices are heard on their fears over the rise in anti-Semitism, then over the years, um, I've had a couple of run-ins with uh, various groups or uh, individuals who would be regarded as uh, uh, radical uh, Islamists, uh, and two of which have been um, it could have easily have been, it cost me my life. One of them, I was a very near miss. I just happened to be uh, out of the office on the day he came. And he went on to then kill one of my colleagues. Um, there's an awful lot of low-level abuse that all MPs get for a variety of reasons. But the two big ones, which could have, could have turned uh, fatal, uh, were by uh, one group called Muslims Against Crusades, and another one was a, uh, a, a, a radicalised individual who described himself as a soldier of IS. And then on Christmas Eve, my office was subject to an arson attack. Now, I have to be careful what I say, because that's still a live uh, criminal case. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the two people that are in prison awaiting trial uh, have not yet uh, said what their motives were. So we have to be careful what we say. But it's just the fire on Christmas Eve was simply the last straw. Um, you know, my husband and uh, family are just uh, basically fed up of wondering whether I'm going to survive and don't like the fact that I sometimes go out and do my job wearing a stamp vest. Yeah. So all in all, um, I decided to step down at the next general election. And, and Mr. Freer, uh, you know, just yesterday we've seen yet another uh, uh, um, uh, mass march at the very centre of, of, of London, this pro-Palestinian, anti-Israeli uh, march. And I'm going to ask you uh, perhaps an unfair question here, and yet your resignation, isn't that to an extent, a victory for haters, for hate? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I, I get that argument. and um, But I, to a degree, members of parliament sign up for the job, and to a degree we sign up, we accept that in a democracy, people will disagree with us and we'll have robust, mm. um, you know, debates. But there is a line, you know, I shouldn't really, you're quite right that... Um, you know, in some way, there, there is that they've won in terms of basically um, my stepping down. But my f husband and my family did not sign up right. um, to being intimidated. Uh, and that's the difference in terms of I'm not prepared to continue to put the anxiety uh, on my husband, wondering whether I'm going to come home after a day's work in the constituency. But I think there's two things. Firstly, um, there can be a variety of reasons why there has been a level, an increase in the level of intimidation. But if I can just address the issue of the marches, um, my local police have been fantastic in terms of looking after me. Mm. But I do say that the, uh, the leadership of the Metropolitan Police need to go back to their core responsibility, which is visible policing. I've challenged the Commissioner in the past about the fact they don't arrest people on the spot. And I understand they don't want to wade into a crowd. They don't want to cause a riot. I get that. Yeah. And they say, oh, oh, but we arrest people later. I say, well, that's not good enough. People need to see mm. that when somebody oversteps a line, when someone calls for jihad or they make overtly anti-Semitic um, comments, they are arrested on the spot. Until people see there are consequences to their behaviour, visible consequences, then we are giving the green light to what we've seen on the streets of London every Saturday for the past few months. And in this respect, it's, it's interesting, the terminology you're using, Mr. Freer, uh, um, uh, to be seen and visible, because just uh, uh, yesterday, um, the Met Police uh, finally uh, introduced this, this ban on concealing one's uh, uh, face during those marches, uh, perhaps an important step in this respect. And Mr. Freer, before we, we let you go, you know, history shows that uh, too often uh, we, we, we are unable to to connect the dots in real time, to, to see the writing on the wall in real time until it's too late. Do, do you think your resignation is enough of a shock, enough of, of, of an alert? Um, well, we've been here before. Unfortunately, we've had instances before where members of parliament have been attacked or killed, um, one by the far right and one by is an Islamic extremist, the one that came to my office first. Um, but we keep saying this is a turning point, but it never is. 
Hmm. We need to fundamentally address the issue of the corrosive impact of social media, where, where propaganda is spewed out without challenge. We need to address what is happening on the streets, where people who overstep the mark are arrested, visibly acting as a deterrent for other people. And then, you know, beyond that, uh, we need to ensure that um, those people who are willing to speak out get necessary protection for doing so. So it has to be a three-pronged um, attack, if you like, on ensuring that we maintain our democracy, but equally maintain our robust ability to argue without feeling threatened.